Good evening, everyone. This is Arunima here. I'm being joined today by our lovely Beth Knowles from ARA Institute of Canterbury. Um, we will try and have a yarn today with Beth, get to know her, and especially get to know about um, ARA, which I believe, Beth, is the largest institute in the South Island, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. We've got uh, three campus sites in Christchurch and one in Timaru and smaller um, offices in Ashburton and in Oomaru. So, yeah, very widespread across the Canterbury region. Brilliant. So um, I welcome you, uh, Beth, to our session. I, guys that are joining us today, I think today is quite a perfect timing to be having this session. We've just received an update from INZ this evening. INZ is re-emphasizing on the toughness of the labor market that is going to happen and is already happening um, in New Zealand and the immigration scene. INZ will be working with employers and recruiting New Zealanders for the role. And so what does that mean for migrants um, that are applying for those visas or they may be kind of, you know, those visa pathways may be cut out for them because of the changing labor market. So um, some of the some of the options that you've got, and if you are looking at upskilling at this time, you may want to consider studying and upskilling and going back into education. Um, the student visa allows you to ride out this challenge and this non-conclusive labor market. And I think by the time you get onto your post-study work options, we're hoping that things will be quite different which is why we're running these series of sessions for you so that you can come and see what's the right course for you, ask the questions, ask questions about the courses. So before I get into the actual session and ARA, Beth, I really want to know more about you and I'm sure people that are listening to us today want to know more about you. So can you please just tell us about yourself? Certainly. I've been in international education for over 30 years. So I was right at the forefront of the international education industry opening up in New Zealand. And um, I'm a great advocate for internationalization. And so I I really feel very privileged to work in this industry. And um, I've worked in four different tertiary institutions in New Zealand. And I've been at ARA since 2007. So um, I love the institution that I work in now. I think our Institute of Canterbury is a fantastic institution and I love the way we work with people like yourself, Arunima, and also with our employers and industry. And we have a fantastic economic development agency in Christchurch called Christchurch New Zealand. And we work very closely with them around employment for our students and filling the skill gaps of our region. So we're very, very focused on outcomes for our international students in particular. That's brilliant. And we are going to unravel and talk about all of that. But I just wanted to mm -hmm. let you know that we are absolutely privileged to have someone with your experience and expertise come and join us today and talk to us. So I thank you very much on behalf of all of us for talking to us tonight. Thanks, um, Thank you. So um, I am expecting quite a few questions today, but Beth, we have been collecting some questions um, ever since we advertised for the event to happen today. What I mm -hmm. want to do is first of all, I think touch touch on what you've just talked about, which I think is the key right now, because uh, because especially people that are within New Zealand and that are looking at going back into education, for them sort of connecting with, with the job market is the key criteria for them to study. Um, you know, a lot of these people come have come into New Zealand through overseas agents without knowing what the labor market in New Zealand is like, without knowing about the right courses. And I know that ARA is definitely one of those unique institutions where there's a very strong industry connection. And you've just touched on that briefly. Can you please elaborate for the people here? What does that actually mean from a practical point of view? Well, we are an institute of technology, so we're government owned and there is a big strategy for the institutes of technology to work as close as possible with the labour market and with employers. So we have a very strong connection with um, all the employers in our region and particularly those in the industries related to our programmes or professional bodies that we're working with. So. That gives us a huge advantage when it comes to training our students because most of our programs will have work integrated learning as part of the study. 
So the students right from day one are getting integrated into the types of networks where they will find employment. And we bring those employers on campus several times a year. So they will get opportunities to meet with them, talk about some of the research projects that they're involved with as part of their study. And it really does give them a huge advantage over um, some other <laughs> providers, I think. So when you talk about um, practical components in the course, is that the internship model or how does that how does that fit into the course? Is it the standard internship model like other providers? I don't um, I don't like referring to it as internship because a lot of internship for people from overseas means something that you do at the end of your study rather than it being integrated into the learning. So our students will be working on research projects or study that um, they need to do in the workplace and they will work on a real life situation. And the value of what they come up with in these projects is often greatly valued by the employer. So, and they start to build the relationships and understand how the workplace in New Zealand operates as well, because it's quite often quite different from their home country, as you can imagine. Absolutely. And I always talk to, um, when I talk to the clients that have got work experience from overseas, um, and they are probably quite employable. One of the things that I say is that you are employable where you need that step in the door. You need that hand-holding. And I think that's exactly what these people need. So that kind of leads me really well um, a bit into the construction courses. Now, obviously, the heart of ARA is Christchurch, which is where the main campus is. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that is the heart of construction in New Zealand. So if, just for me to get my head around this, you talked about the employment and um, placement during the course. So I understand that there's a, there's a few key courses in construction. You've got the graduate diplomas in construction courses, the quantity surveying courses. What are those? Can you just describe for me how the practical part of that works? That I'm just kind of making it a bit specialized for the construction stream and just trying to understand what it means for people that are wanting to get into those courses. Well, we have a Department of Engineering and Architectural Studies. So all of our construction management, our architectural studies, interior design, quantity surveying, um, all of those programs are in the same department. So there's a lot of crossover. And if you come down to visit our campus and you into that department, it is the most modern building you can imagine. And a lot of the construction styles are evidenced in the building. So the building itself is a teaching place. It has a strong focus on sustainability too, which is um, very big in the design of the lot of the buildings in the new city. It's a very exciting place and we do have people coming from all around the world to have a look at a lot of the construction projects in Christchurch. Many of the government projects are built by Fletcher's, which is one of the biggest construction firms in New Zealand. There's a lot of other construction companies in Christchurch, and um, one of the biggest ones, Lee's Construction, is actually run by a graduate of ARA from a few years back. So. Um, there's a lot of success stories and we have some really strong relationships into those um, industries. And I do love the way the students get to work on their projects across disciplines. So they may be working on the same research project and you'll have the interior design students um, working on the design aspect interior um, wise you'll have quantity surveyors that are measuring up the quantities of everything that's needed for the construction project. You'll have the construction management students, and they can sometimes be working on the same project together. So it's very much like the workplace because in the workplace, the engineers have to work alongside the construction managers and um, you know the quantity surveyors and, and everything else. So. I think it's a great preparation for working in the industry. And we have a very popular Bachelor of Construction Management, but we also have two 
graduate diplomas, the graduate diploma in quantity surveying and the bachelor, uh, the graduate diploma in construction management as well. Yep. So yeah. anybody with a civil engineering background, those programs, those graduate diplomas are, are really suitable for them. And I can absolutely vouch because I've actually visited um, Ara's campus and I have actually traveled in that building and I remember taking dozens and dozens of photos uh, and whoever mm -hmm. was showing me around told me this is what the campus was. And I know, it, I think it was Abhinit showing me around and just right. looking yeah. was, you know, the building and where the students, it was, it was actually really fascinating. So that's, that's, I can absolutely um, confirm that I've actually witnessed it with my own eyes. So just for those of you that are listening, I mean, I wanted to start off with the construction courses. And as Beth has said, um, you, they've got the graduate diploma in construction management, the graduate diploma in quantity surveying and the bachelors of construction, which has got specializations in quantity surveying and construction management. And those of you that do know, these courses do have outcomes that lead into the skill shortage areas. So you can become a quantity surveyor, you can become a construction project manager, and all of these occupations do sit in the skill shortage areas um, in New Zealand. So that's that's fantastic. Um, it's a I can, tremendous I can, advantage because in Christchurch, one of the issues we are facing is quite an aging population, um, even compared to some other cities in New Zealand of, um, you know, similar major cities. Our population is more of an aging population. It may be something to do with the South Island, I'm not sure. But um, we do know that um, the research that we had done shows that we are going to be short of workers by 2030 as more people retire. So um, there is definitely, in the medium to long term, there will definitely be these shortages. And also the government has got shovel ready projects. They That's are right. Funded, so there will be jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been doing blogs on those construction projects and the funding that's gone towards it. So, you know, that, that, that is something that's going to keep being New Zealand's backbone. Um, so I'm going to keep letting the questions build up. Um, we've got similar questions that we're going to pick up. But I think just at the back of that aging population that we've just talked about, I do now want to get into the nursing and the health sciences programs that ARA offers, which I know are quite, um, you know, hands on as well. Um, there's, there's a very wide range of courses. Um, you've, I know there's a bachelor's of nursing, there's the diploma of all nursing, there's midwifery, there's um, in the sciences, there's the lab technology grad dips. So um, Beth, can you please talk to us about these courses? I know there's a lot of interest from people, you know, looking at starting nursing, getting into the lab technology, um, yes. getting into health sciences. So do you just want to quickly talk to us about those courses, please? I'd love to. Ara has a very strong reputation in nursing. Um, I think Canterbury District Health Board has been a leading health board and we have a most wonderful campus for our health students. It's called the Manawa Campus and it's right adjacent to the Christchurch Public Hospital, which is the biggest hospital in the South Island. And um, we share facilities with the researchers from University of Canterbury as well. So it's the most modern facility in Australasia. It's it's leading edge health um, research facility as well as a training um, campus for our nursing and midwifery students. So we feel very proud of that, but we also feel very proud of our reputation in employment for our nurses. We have the best employment rate for nursing in New Zealand. So we're very proud of that and our achievement in the nursing um, area. I think too that we've got some amazing academic staff. We, um, You may have seen on the news recently that um, there's been a lot of uh, researchers and people, famous people um, in the healthy area that have been talking through the COVID-19 pandemic and a lot of them are based in Christchurch. So um, yeah, we were the first uh, city to have the testing facility up and running for COVID-19. So, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely leading edge um, in many areas of health. Yeah, that's great. So, just on on those courses, while I'm and I'm going to get into the questions because I can see there's quite a few building up here. Just on the questions, one of the things that we are quite often asked is that to get into the nursing degree. Is there an opportunity for people to combine their English testing? Like, can they do IELTS and PT together? Or is it just the one sword? 
Um, can they? Oh, um, yes, good question. Good question. We are the IELTS um, testing centre in Christchurch, and we also test for Pearson's. So we're, we've got a very large English language examination centre. Um, unfortunately, NZQA doesn't allow clubbing of scores for entry. So it must be the one test um, results that you put forward for Bachelor of Nursing. But we do have an alternative pathway. So students can come and study the New Zealand Certificate in English Language. They need to pass level five in NCEL to um, enter into the nursing, but that's a direct entry pathway without. Oh, so that's an. How long? Yes, sorry. Please. It's just how one semester, time? one semester of study. Yes. So that's fantastic because I know that's a lot of people that you know have not had the opportunity to find dates because IELTS, everything was closed because of lockdown and the dates are all sold out and they are very keen to get into the July intake. So that could be an alternative pathway that they could get into that foundation program into the English level five certificate, pass the course and then actually move on to the nursing degree. Am I right? That's correct. And our Bachelor of Nursing staff say that they actually prefer the students that come through the in cell level five because we do a lot of medical English in the course. So we actually really focus on the medical English words that sometimes the students find difficult. So um, I'm going to yeah. remember to not know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm gonna jump into these questions now. Um Bet. Um, so Preet here is asking us, does Ara offer cross credits for bachelors from India? We do look at recognition of prior learning. Um, obviously, it does matter what subjects you've studied in India. And um, it's on, you know, it's case by case because sometimes we need to find the equivalent um, study, obviously. But we, yes, we definitely do RPO and it is quite popular. Um, there are some students that prefer to do RPL for Bachelor of Nursing too. Um, but sometimes the professional bodies also have a maximum number of credits that we can give. Um, and in the case of nursing, the Nursing Council will only allow one year of credit. So, oh, okay. so, you, so if we have yeah. someone who got a Bachelor of Nursing, oh, there's a lot of echo here, I think. Sorry. Yes, there is, yeah. yeah. Technology, you've got to hate it sometimes, isn't it? Um, yeah. But if we've got someone who's got a bachelor's of nursing from overseas, um, is has got some work experience and now wants to come to New Zealand and for some reason wants to do a bachelor's of nursing or they've got a GNM, which is a diploma from India, they can actually apply for cross credit with the bachelor's degree for nursing, am I right? They and can, yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, okay. There's also... Um, another opportunity for them, if they have a bachelor's qualification in nursing, they can also do the graduate diploma in nursing. Um, they must have a letter from the Nursing Council for the competency assessment program, because at the end of their graduate study, they then study the competency assessment program and they gain registration from that. Um, so I think that's a really good pathway if they have a strong bachelor's. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get my if someone has, if someone has done a bachelor's from overseas and yes. they and they've got work experience, they can apply for the registration directly with the New Zealand Nursing Council. They get a letter for the CAP course. They go and do the CAP course, and then they can go out in the workplace. If they don't have enough work experience, are you saying that they can then still go to the nursing council, get the cap letter, but do the grad dip instead first? We actually prefer the students coming from overseas to do the graduate diploma because they actually gain a lot more from that um, during their study in the graduate diploma because it's just a one year course, it's just um, February to November. And really they, they get to adjust to New Zealand, they learn a lot about the differences in nursing in New Zealand. And they it also opens their 
eyes up to some of the work opportunities too, the different careers in nursing, because there are a lot of different avenues you can um, go down in New Zealand, and there might be some opportunities that they haven't had in their own nursing career in their home country that they're not even aware of. So I really do encourage students to do the full year in the graduate diploma. I think it gives them a lot of amazing work opportunities at the end of that program. And they are generally very successful in the competency assessment program. So that is for students from overseas, I, I totally think they they gain a lot of benefit from that. We mainly fill our CAP program with people so we're already working in health jobs in New Zealand. So those are the only students we take into the competency assessment program directly. And students from overseas, we offer the graduate diploma, which we feel has a lot of advantages for them. Hmm. So moving on to the next one, um, Beth, I've got this question, which I'm often asked, especially now that, you know, a lot of onshore people that are within New Zealand are looking at becoming return students. The questions around um, scholarships, and the ability for them to pay in parts for the course. So can you please tell us if ARA's got scholarships and if there's an opportunity for those students to pay part payments instead of paying for the whole year, so pay semester one? I'll answer about the payment by semester first. One of the joys of my job as international director is that I do have the ability to sign off for payment by semester for students who are on shore. So if um, the admissions team uh, come to me and say, we've got a student that wants to pay by a semester, I have the ability to approve that for onshore students, yes. Great. Great. And the second part of your question about scholarships, um, Unfortunately, it's not a lot of scholarships for international students, but we have a special one at ARA for students with an Indian passport who study in a qualification of two or three years. In their second year, they can apply for a scholarship which is funded through a community trust in Christchurch, and I think this is a fantastic opportunity for Indian students. Um, and we have um, an amount of money that has been donated to ARA. To, um, students have to apply for it and they have to uh, write how they are going to contribute to the community in New Zealand as a result of their studies with us. And um, we've got three students this year who got just over $3,000 each for their second year of study. So we, we feel that's an amazing scholarship that we are able to offer to students. With so I have to ask, why is it just for Because the beneficiary, the trust is um, local Indian community. Uh, it's a couple. It's a very nice story, actually. Um, he immigrated to New Zealand many years ago, Indian man, and he worked for Air New Zealand. And he did his study at ARA a long time ago in engineering. And he's been very grateful to ARA for um, the life he's yeah. had in New Zealand. And as a result of his studies and his career that he's had here in the Canterbury region, and he wanted to give back. And he really did feel that a lot of Indian students, it was financially quite tough for them. So we're hoping that that scholarship will grow with our alumni, you know, that other people may want to contribute and um, really keep that scholarship going. Because I think it's just so motivating for the students in their first year if they get good results and um, they put a good case forward, they've got a very good chance. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm going to keep moving on, Beth, because um, you apparently are quite popular. We've got lots of questions coming through um, and I've got lots of ground to cover with only a few minutes. We might even have to do a follow up session because we won't be able to get through all of this. But um, I just want to tell you, can I just say that there is one other scholarship for English language and I'll send through the details to you about that um, because we're just at the moment looking 
at some criteria for September intake for the NCEL program and for 2021. So I would want to tell you about that scholarship, but I'll send it to you and then you can promote it through your channel. Please, please. Absolutely, because um, any penny that these students can save is a penny saved because obviously pockets absolutely. are... Absolutely, absolutely. And we do understand that at this time that people's circumstances are changing and it is more difficult, yes. Brilliant. Um, so I'm going to ask you about um, the question that I've been asked all of the last two weeks, uh, which is around the trades courses. And I know you and I have had lots of offline conversations about this. Um, I know that normally international students can't get into the trades. And I know the reason for that because of the way these courses are delivered, which requires them to work for time. And I've been, you know, really pushing out for these trades courses because that's where New Zealand has a huge shortage. And I don't quite understand why the international education is not used as an avenue to fill into those skill shortages, especially now that the borders are closed. So I've got a question here from Mohammed here asking about the trades courses. Can you please tell us where we stand with the trades courses for ARA? Yes, we don't promote the trades courses offshore for the very reasons that you have um, said. It's, it's not possible for students to get visas to come to New Zealand to study in lower level courses. Um, however, if somebody's on a work visa and they're in a job and the employer needs them to um, have a qualification that's New Zealand based, then there are some students who do get an exemption and we are able to enrol them um, to get the qualification they need. And a good example of that would be in the electrical trades. Um, they need to get registration in New Zealand to practice as an electrician. And if they have come to New Zealand with a qualification from overseas and then their employer needs them to have the New Zealand registration, then they will enrol at ARA for that. So those kind of situations are reasonably common and we'd usually be working with the employer in that case to get them to have the certification that they need. And sometimes it's in the health and safety area, of course, because that's very important in the trades. Yeah. Also, I think we will, we will probably have another follow-up session as this evolves because I am talking to a lot of providers mm -hmm. to try and open up where it's possible. And so yep. I know that Beth and I are going to continue but I think one of the things that I want to tell people is that those people that are on open work visa, so if you've got your spouse that's either studying a master's or that has got the three years open work visa that's going to come through and you're on an open work visa, that's a perfect platform for you to be getting into trades because a lot of these courses are delivered part time through work two or three years. And if you've got an open work visa for two or three years, that's perfect because at the end of it, you could actually come out becoming a carpenter and applying for residence straight away because that is a skilled occupation. There yes, is I've actually got a student just like that at the moment who's um, studying plumbing. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, so there was a question that was asked earlier um, in here, Beth, which was around the labour market changing. And I know that we're kind of coming to the end of this. And I do want to touch on the culinary arts school because that's, I've been there and I've seen it and that's extra special. But before I do mm -hmm. that... Um, what's your view on the changing labor market and the graduate employment rates? And you've talked about the nurses, you've talked about the other um, construction graduates. So obviously there's been very high placements, but with the labor market changing so rapidly right now, what's your thoughts or forecast on how that's going to impact the international education space for students? Because those are really, really important questions. And whilst we, not, we, we may not have the answers, but with your experience, you might have some um, views on it. I have the view that New Zealand has managed the health um, and well-being of our population really well. And I do believe that we're going to become a country of interest. And I think long term we're going to do very well out of the way that we've come through this. But I think in the short term for a lot of New Zealanders, especially younger New Zealanders, they've never really faced a time where employment becomes challenging. So I think for a lot of them, it's going to be quite challenging. But I also believe that New Zealand and Australia has the opportunity to open a bubble um, and to get our tourism industry going quite well. And a lot of our tourism like in Christchurch, it's quite high the percentage of tourism that's domestic tourism. So I think the winter is always a quiet time for tourism, apart from the ski areas. And so 
South Island, we get a lot of tourists from Australia for, for skiing um, because we have the beautiful Southern Alps in, in the South Island and they're great um, in the winter time for tourism. So, look, I, I think it's hopefully going to be a fairly temporary thing. I think the challenge for some of the students overseas at the moment is getting flights to New Zealand even when the border opens. And there will be a bit of a challenge around getting visas processed because there's no offshore processing at the moment, yeah. which is very, very unhelpful. So, yeah. um, you know, there are some short-term challenges, but I think we're a country that's quite adaptable and we can quickly um, scale up when we have to. Like I, and I think like I started um, said at the start of this conversation, this is the downtime. We know that after downtime comes high time. And so we've been through really highs and lows, but right now through these lows, if if people can be cleverer with how they want to plan their careers and go back into upskilling themselves, by the time they're finished with their studies, the chances are the economy would be bouncing back, things would hmm. be opening, the world would be opening, and there would be those jobs where, you know, which cannot be filled in by that local um, workforce available in New Zealand. So Beth, I'm going to now move on um, to, mm -hmm. so do you want to add to that? No, I totally agree with you. I think this is the time, and I think students who are here and, or people here in New Zealand who have got visas expiring in September need to start planning now for next year to make sure that they've got some plans in place because it is going to be a bit challenging, and I think it's good to have some plans to do some study, come out at the right time with the qualifications to fill the gaps. Yeah. And I think that's exactly why we're doing these series of sessions so that we as trusted education and immigration partners with ARA can actually talk to these students. And I think someone asked earlier, I've done this in my background, what's the right course for me? That's exactly the pathway and the career counseling that we work with you on as the partners with ARA to be able to advise you on the courses, the market, the outcome, the immigration pathways. Um, yeah, so I think we'll move on to the culinary arts before we wrap this conversation. Clearly, we can't get through everything and we will have to have a follow up session. Um, but just mm -hmm. I just want to touch about the culinary arts because I've actually seen the, the department and I've seen and I know that it's got. I can't remember the name of the award, but the award that no other institute in New Zealand has. Can you please tell us about it? Uh, well, we are a member of the World Chefs Association. So, um, we're very proud of that because we were the first New Zealand Institute to be awarded that. Um, in Australia, there's only one institution in Perth that's got that. So it shows the quality of our teaching staff. Um, many of them are international judges in culinary arts and hospitality areas. So we have great connections globally, not just throughout New Zealand and the industry. And um, I've got a lot of international graduates who are working offshore as well as in New Zealand and some top jobs in culinary. So very proud of our school. We've also won the Tote Dior Award nationally, I think more times than any other institution in New Zealand. Yes, yeah, so we're very proud. <laughs> Cafe and I've seen the old, you know, place in front of the cafe. So yeah, um, yeah, it's great. It's and we've even got the old Tokti or Shield because our name was on it so many times they decided to give it to us when they needed to update the award and, and have a new um new beautiful new golden hat to give out. <laughs> Brilliant. So I think, I mean, you know, ARA does have a range of courses. Um, Beth will share some details about scholarships, which we will share with you guys. Um, I can absolutely promise you guys that we will be answering those questions. If we don't have the answers, I will get the answers and get them to you. I'm very keen to have conversation around trades with the international providers, with the education providers in New Zealand and how we can align the international education with that. I'm going to be having a conversation with Ara about it. And we will absolutely have Beth back to answer more questions. But in the meantime, I, you know, we are going to be posting about the courses. Go through the website, go to the courses, ask us what you want to do. Um, and we can absolutely help you, you know, get onto the right pathway. Um, Beth, I thank you very, very, very much for joining us. Oh, it's um, a pleasure working with Ames. We know that um, you counsel the students very well and, and we know that they will get good outcomes if they come by you. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. And we've only worked with you with what, for about 14, 15 years now? So it's, that's <laughs> right. Yes, I actually visited um, 
Chandiga and um, met your parents in 2005. So yeah. we, uh, we go back a long way for sure. Yes. Um, so, guys, with that, I'm going to call it a night. Um, lots of information has been shared. There'll be more information coming through. So, keep watching our Facebook page for more events that are coming up. Um, and just keep grabbing onto this information and asking questions. Have a good night, all of you. Thanks, Arunima. Good night, everyone.